Between various adventures at the drag strip, letting people review the car, and of course wearing a bikini while doing a burnout, the three rotor has been through a hell of a lot. With the four rotor coming, there's not much room for the three rotor anymore. And in fact, the four rotor is such a massive project and massively over budget, my original goal was to sell the three rotor to help fund it. This is not an inconsequential amount of money, and while it might just buy the transmission in the four rotor, it still makes a difference. So my question to you is this. Do you do the adult sensible thing, sell the car, focus on one project and push it as fast as you can? Or do you keep both cars, slow down your big project and find some way to afford it by maybe working extra nights on the street corner? I don't know. I'm actually interested in your opinion, so please, in, as you know, I love interacting on the comments, so just let me know what your thoughts are. Do you split your focus, slow down your big project, or do you keep what got you there? And as you know, I'm a, I'm a loyalist. I'm the type of guy that can't help but be the captain of a sinking ship. I'm going to stay with it. I, I love this car too much. It's what got me here. So, because I won't be able to read your comments by the time I'm filming to the time this video airs, I'm going to tell you what I've already done, which is the foolish thing. I've got more projects in store for this car. Some of the projects planned for the winter include something as simple as this, which is not simple at all. This beast <laughs> needs to be rewired. I've had so many electrical gremlins with this car that it's time to put a new computer system in it as well as new wiring. So the Adaptronic is the car ECU system, the, the computer to the car. That's the same one I'm gonna be using in the four rotor. So it makes perfect sense to have the same in both. The system that's in this car is a Tech 3R, it's electromotive, works clearly great, but sucks, absolutely is horrible for tunable street driving, which this was always meant to be a street car. But you keep it at like a idle or a, a, a go 45 miles an hour on a normal street and the car's bucking and having a hard time. That's where I believe the Adaptronic's gonna just knock it out of the park. While I'm working on the Adaptronic and rewiring the entire engine harness, I'm also gonna fix a massive problem with this car. What you'll see is it has, like it should, six coils, but each coil has two plugs on it. So I have, if you've ever looked at pictures of this car, I have six spare, have to be hot wired, spare spark plugs on this vehicle. So I have a total of 12, six being used and six, six being terminated into a block that goes to nothing. So I'm gonna be putting some of the, uh, the smart coils that only have one spark plug on there, finally. Just how rough is this car? Let me show you. When I did the bikini burnout, while some of the people were focused on this gorgeous body in the horrific outfit, other people were focused on the important issue, which is the poor car. This tire here whipped <laughs> and nanaed <laughs> all over the paint. So you can see just a little bit of it just with my name, but uh, on the close-up shot, you can see that it actually scratched the crap out of the paint. You'd, be, you'd think that I was upset that the paint was destroyed. I'm not. I, that was actually a side uh, consequence I wasn't too worried about because the paint's in poor condition to begin with. Let me show you just how bad the paint is. All along the whole car, you'll notice that there's like these like moo cow, they're like splotches. And I would cringe if what I was doing was on a, a better car, but these spots, are all like, it looks like acid rain, but it's just the clear coat of this repaint is so poor and so soft that this car scratches easily, it pits easily, it acid rains probably with normal rain, uh, it, there's spider marks all over it, the whole car is just, the paint's just falling apart. And as you know, I've ran a detail shop for a while and I've used a lot of excellent products on this thing and you can't put good money after bad. This thing needs to be repainted. And there was actually a gentleman online who contacted me and said, hey, we'd love to uh, repaint this car and you know, have you do a video about our shop. We, we repaint it. Everybody wins. I forgot who messaged me that, but when I find your message, I'm going to take you up on that because I want to make a video about what it's like to have a car repainted and I want this car repainted. So it's a win-win for everybody. Further though, on this side of the car, 
the metal had come off so bad, the banding in the, uh, the bias ply tire, or uh, radial tire, that it ripped the side skirt, the aftermarket, you know, the, carb oops, the carbon fiber feed uh, side skirts, feed knockoff ones, shine, and uh, ripped it straight off the body. And then uh, took some of the screws from the <laughs> fender off as well. So the body, like I said, the body just needs tons of work. This car also, when I first bought it, um, I bought it in what? Oh, 2011, 2013? I think maybe 20, no, 2012. End of 2011, sorry. All over the map. Even then, the car wasn't in perfect condition. It was actually in really rough shape. Uh, well, all that mattered was that it sounded amazing and hauled ass. But overall, the car is actually uh, in very rough condition. You can see that there's no hood. Um, a friend of mine was driving the car. This is for once in my life. I wasn't the one with bad luck, although it's my car that had bad luck. A friend of mine was driving the car. They went to latch the front latch. It must have bent instead of hooking. And the hood came up and hit the windshield. Did not break the windshield but destroyed the hood, the custom hood on this car. And I showed you the uh, spark plug wires. That's absolutely horrible. That's uh, redundant at best. Uh, I rewired the body harness because there's two harnesses on this car. There's an engine bay harness, which comes from back here and goes to the fuel injectors, the ignition system, all of your sensors. That's, that goes to the ECU. That is gonna get rewired and you know, with solid brand new wire. But then the whole body harness needs to be wrapped and, and protected. That, that is where I made the mistake. Of, you can see it running under here. It actually works really well. But the mistake I made was I cut one very important line off. It's what controls the pop-up lights. The lights work, but uh, I have to manually spin each one by hand to get it to move. So uh, if I ever get to that, if I'm gonna get that thorough with this car, um, I, would, I would fix that. A couple things on my dream wish list, if I was, you know, if, I, if this was my, like, if I didn't have the four rotor, if, if nothing else was going on, I would replace this tried and true uh, S480. It's amazing, uh, I, I'm, I can't talk shit about it, it's a wonderful turbo, but it's horribly missized. I mean, you see the videos, 5,000 RPM before you even get some sort of boost response. This is also a journal bearing turbo, and I'm a big fan of ball bearing turbos. I'm a big fan of billet turbos. I'm a big fan of Garrett, as you know. Um, I've been a lifelong fan of them. And uh, of course the four rotor is running that solid uh, second gen GTX 5533R. I say that stuff in my sleep. Uh, so I wish I would put a you know, new turbo on this car. The problem is, is that would completely, uh, that would necess necessitate a lot of other changes. So I'd like to do that, but um, you gotta look at how much effort you're gonna put into this car for the return. Which brings me to the, the most controversial uh, upgrade I, to, I could do to this car. Uh, behind you in the camera, you don't, you don't need to have the camera go that way, but behind the camera, uh, I have the automatic bell housing, the automatic starter, as well as Chip Motorsports uh, adapter to setting up the T56. I never went T56 on this car. It's still the stock trans. The reason why, as you can now see with all my four rotor adventures, the four rotor uh, transmission was $30,000 with all the pieces, just the box, you know, with, with its uh, uh, accessories, 25, um, and then accessories go nuts. So needless to say that took all my money, that took all my attention, that engineer took all of my like, brain power, and I left this one stock. So, will I do that? It's another five grand uh, in parts, including the transmission from here. The T56 has a problem where it's a six speed, but it doesn't have that good of gearing. So, a lot of great upgrades to do this car. Uh, you see what's wrong with it, and you see what I need to do to it. Let's see what happens. What's important to note is even with all of these negatives and things that I want to do to improve the car, including the car needs it, what you need to understand is this thing never lets me down. I've had this thing for what, almost six years now? And it hasn't ran since I did the, uh, the big burnout video. Let's see it fire up. At least it should. Should fire up. I did overheat the oil several times, but 
nothing gives me an indication it's gonna have a problem. <laughs> okay. Don't do that starter. You can see the electrical issues I'm talking about. Okay, it's the dead of winter. This is the first time she's not started back up on me, but it's not for lack of trying. The, the voltage is low on the battery, and uh, clearly I'm having starter issues. But this is all the more reason why this car needs all of this love. So I'm gonna be doing a couple of videos while I'm doing the four rotor project, but this is like the still my old school homegrown videos of me working on cars poorly. <laughs>